Today, we're going to be making our own custom characters in Roblox Studio. Why this is important is simply because when you want to make your own custom games, you need some custom characters as well. That's why today, we're going to be making those custom characters. And to start off, you're going to need a plugin called Rig Edit Lite. This plugin will of course be linked down below in the description if you'd like to get it, so feel free to get that and then come right back to the video. Now, let's start off by going to the Avatar tab, opening up the Rig Builder, which is what's responsible for creating and generating any rig we could ever need or want inside of our game. I'm going to select a block avatar. One thing you'll notice about this rig is that if we open it up inside, there are a few core things that we're going to need. The first thing is you'll notice that it has something called a humanoid root part. This is the root part of our rig. It's sort of like the main block that holds everything together. The piece that the other pieces are glued to pretty much. It also has a head which is a necessary component for the humanoid to function. And you also notice that it has something called a humanoid. The humanoid is sort of like what a brain is to a human. That's the humanoid to a rig. It controls everything such as the name, the health display distance, jumping, sitting, the health, the max health, walk speed, any setting like that is controlled by the humanoid. So now we've got three things that we know a rig needs. A humanoid, a head, and a humanoid root part. Let's go ahead and delete this rig and we can get to making our own. First off, I'm just going to click on this home button right up here. And I'm going to insert a part by clicking on this button. Now we have this part inside of our workspace. We can feel free to make our character however we would like to. I'm personally going to start off with a leg. And then another leg. And then I'm going to want a torso. Just like this and then I'm going to create the arms on these sides and then last but not least we're going to need a head so for that I'm going to click on this little drop down menu beneath the part and add in a sphere for the head now this I'm going to add right on top of my mesh here our rig I mean to say and now we have not only a head but a body as well now keep in mind the different rig types when you're making a custom rig it really doesn't matter how many parts it has as long as we can rig it correctly however there are two common rig types we have an r6 rig which is a rig with six body parts and we have an r15 rig which is a rig with 15 body parts this right here is what would be considered an r6 rig simply because it has six body parts However, you could have one that has 12 body parts, 4 body parts, it really doesn't matter as long as it has a head and a humanoid root part. You can have a minimum of one body part being the head and a maximum of an infinite amount of parts. After that, it's pretty optimal that we should go ahead and rename our parts to sort of structure how we want our rig to be. This right here is the left leg, so I'm going to rename it left leg. And this right here is the right leg, so I'll rename it to right leg. And you go through and do that for every single body part in the game. So for this, this is the torso, so I'll rename it to torso and then the left arm, right arm, and the head. Now we have all of our body parts named, we need to go ahead and select all of them. So you can either drag and hold and select all of these parts like this, or you can simply hold shift and click on each individual part. It doesn't matter how you select them all, just as long as you have them selected. And after that, we're just going to press Ctrl and G, or you can right click and press on Group. And what this is going to do is going to group all of these parts together as a model inside of our workspace. And this is important because we need our rig to be inside of a model, because that's going to be holding the humanoid, the humanoid root part, all of our other parts. Now let's open up this model here, and we need to select our torso inside of here. Go ahead and press Ctrl and D to duplicate the torso. And we're going to rename it to Humanoid Root Part. So capital H Humanoid Root Part. With a capital R and a capital P as well as the capital H. For this Humanoid Root Part, you can set the transparency to 1 because we are not going to want to see the Humanoid Root Part itself. It's just simply there as a part to glue all of our other parts together. After that, we can click on our model right here. Click on the plus icon to the right of our model, it should appear after hovering over it, and then we're going to search for a humanoid. When you insert the humanoid into the model, if your model has all the correct parts such as the head and the humanoid root part, then you should see the name appear above your model. If not, then please make sure you go and make sure that all of your parts are named correctly. 
Now that we have our model properly rigged and set up, which it hasn't actually been rigged yet, we still need to do that, but it has been set up with all of our proper parts, and that is what's perfect. So here's where we're going to want to get our rig edit plugin. For me, I'm just going to go to my plugins tab and select on rig edit light. One thing to note, it won't actually let you select this plugin unless you are selecting a model or a rig. So once you go ahead and select your model right here, you want to click on rig edit light or rig edit, depending on what you're going to be using. And you'll notice this box appear around our rig right here. You'll also notice this little window in the top right. Now, when we create a joint, this is going to be between two parts that are going to be animatable. When we create a weld, this is simply going to weld two parts together. And I'll show you the different instances that we use these in. So for creating joints, what we want to do is we want to select the different parts that are going to be animatable, such as the arms, the torso, the head, important body parts like that. But for side details, you could say you want to use welds. These are going to be for parts that aren't going to be animatable, such as eyeballs, ears, a nose, maybe it could be a shoulder pad, any other detail that you have on your character that isn't going to be necessarily animatable, you're going to use and create welds for that. Now when we start by rigging a character with rig edit light, we always start by selecting the humanoid root part and then holding control and selecting the torso. After that we are going to click on create joint and this is going to create a joint between the humanoid root part and the torso. From there we simply select our torso and then go to every other body part inside of our rig. So for me this will be torso to right leg, create joint, torso to right arm, create joint, torso to left leg, create joint, and then torso to left arm, create joint. After that, we'll say torso to head and create joint. Now here's what I was saying with the shoulder pad analogy. Let's say we had a shoulder pad for our character over here. What we would want to do is simply click on my left arm right here, because that would be the arm that has the shoulder pad. Then I would hold control and click on the shoulder pad and then you would simply click on create weld. And what that would do would weld the arm to the shoulder pad and that way they will work flawlessly. But I don't have a shoulder pad so I'm not going to be doing that. Now if you open up your torso and select on any of these different joints right here, you'll notice that there are a few black spheres around the joint. And here's where we get to move around our joint. So right now the step is set to one stud, but we can change this down to 0.1 studs, which is a unit of measurement inside of Roblox Studio. And we can move this down to right where we want our two parts to meet or to connect, because this is going to be the pivot as to where we will be animating. So I'm just going to set these right where our two parts connect and right where I would want them to be animating. So for me, this is right at the ball and socket joint and the shoulder that humans have. But for our Roblox character, he doesn't actually have that same joint. And then for the legs, we'll simply move them up here just like this. So here's everything that we need to do to properly rig our model or our rig. And once we're done, we can simply close off the plugin by selecting it again and we are good to go. Now you'll always know if you rigged your model correctly if you can go to the avatar tab, click on the animation editor, and there's a blue box around your model. If there isn't a blue box, then you made a mistake somewhere and you need to go back and fix it by following along this tutorial or maybe by practicing on your own. After that, if you have rigged everything correctly, you can click on the model and you should be able to give it a name for your animation. This will be a test animation, so that's what I'm going to name mine, and then click on create. From there, you should be free to animate your character however you would like to. You can move the arms up, you can move the head down if you would like to, you can even move the legs, and you have your very own custom model. If you would like to as well, you can rename the model to starter character with a capital S and a capital C, and you can even drag it into the starter player folder. And what this is going to do is when you click on play to play your game, it's going to spawn you as your starter character. Now, one interesting thing you'll notice is that it's very weird to move around, and that's because we haven't set the settings for our humanoid correctly. So let's click on stop and redo those settings real quick. Inside of our starter character, let's drag him back to the workspace. Let's open him up, and then inside of the humanoid, we need to go down and change a few of these settings. I'm going to scroll down till we find a setting called the hip height. 
and this will determine simply how high the hips are. And this is useful for determining how we want our rig to be able to move. This looks like it's about three or four studs off the ground, so I'm gonna set the hip height to four. If you set it too high, then your humanoid will float. And if you set it too low, it's going to be really, really difficult to move your character. And it's not going to move where you want it to go. So you want it to be as accurate as possible. And then we can simply move our starter character back into starter player and then click on play. Now you can see we move much better, much easier. And we have our very own custom model here very cool anyways guys if you enjoyed this video just as much as i did please make sure you like subscribe and comment down below it means a lot to me it's completely free i hope you have an absolutely amazing rest of your day and goodbye